Hi guys, Twitch here from Creep Designs. Uh, today I'm bringing you a video of the eight chairs that go with the table that I did last week. Uh, I forgot to record my intro for this video and I need to get it done. So I am doing the intro in my bed. Uh, I'm probably going to struggle a bit to do the voiceover for this video, so bear with me. It's been a full on day of socialising and being out in public. Uh, caught up with Tanya from Carts and Millie today. That was great. Our kids played. Love seeing the kids play together. Absolutely love it. Uh, always good to catch up with her. Yeah. Let's get on with it. Alright, so I'd already started to pull them apart by this point and completely forgot to take photos, but that's them. Uh, so to take the cushions off, I found this is the best position to get it in and it just had one screw in the front and one in either side and that's how I got the cushions off. So I decided to completely disassemble the chairs because I need to stain all of the chairs and this is going to be the easiest way to sand them. Just like with anything else that I pull apart, I start by looking at it to see how it would have gone together and basically do it in reverse. So they had two bolts in each corner and then two smaller ones in the back. The two spindles between the legs were just held together by a screw in each end and were really simple to pull apart. I did have a look at the backing of it to see if that might come apart easily but I didn't want to take the chance that I would break the chair and it looked like it was held together fairly sturdy. Now that all the chairs are dissembled, I started sanding using the Cartsamelli PrepMate 2 Orbital Sander. I used it without the foam interface pad uh, and just started off sanding all of the flat surfaces that I could get to, including on the back. Um, for each chair sand, doing this part of the sanding process, it took me about 10 minutes per chair uh, doing it with the PrepMate sander. Uh, because of the way you hold it, can hold this sander, it made it really easy to get into all the small places um, and because of how lightweight it is, uh, it really didn't put a great deal of strain on my wrist or my hand to do all of this sanding. And I will also put another link for another video in the description uh, showing and talking about this sander. So once all of the flat parts were done, I put the foam interface pad on with, I'm pretty sure it was 120 grit sandpaper uh, and went over all of the curved edges and all the straight edges and as much as I could get to with the sander. So this is where things went a little bit pear-shaped. Uh, for the finer details and corners and stuff that I couldn't get into with the sander, I decided to have a go at sandblasting or soda blasting. Uh, 
this sandblaster ended up being a complete dud for what I needed it for and so I ditched that. I then swapped to hand sanding. Uh, it took me a complete day just to do two chairs. It was excruciating. Uh, my hands were absolutely killing me and I had no fingerprints left by the end of the day. That was just for two chairs. Alright, so as you saw, I didn't have much luck with the small sandblaster. So I tried hand sanding. It took me an entire day to do two chairs. Doesn't sound like it would take that much and you're probably wondering why it took so long. There was other stuff going on in the background at the same time but I'm trying to make sure I get all of the finish off otherwise there'll be orange bits that come through and I don't want that at all. So I made a weekend trip to Bunnings and picked up one of these ones. I'll turn you around. So I went and grabbed one of these sandblasters and I'm hoping this will work a lot better. After I had a go of using the other one, I jumped on YouTube and saw some other guy's review about the smaller one and he had the exact same problems that I had. Um, so I'll be ditching that one somehow. I'll either sell it or give it away to someone else who wants it. Um, and I did have a look at spray tents and they don't look like they're very cheap or affordable at all so I went to Kmart and got myself this. So this is a little pop-up beach shelter. Um, it was $16 at Kmart and you know what? It'll do the job and if it doesn't do the job um, my son can play with it. So let's see how this goes. All right, so this sandblaster was a lot better. Uh, it had a lot more power and it was a lot more efficient. Didn't run out of soda medium anywhere near as fast because of how much it held. Uh, but I had to go and get a pair of gloves and I taped the, had to put tape all around the goggles because it was getting behind the goggles and into my eyes and it was just going everywhere. My knuckles were like red raw after this. Uh, so whilst it did a good job on the chairs, was it worth it? Would I do it again? No. I packed it in after two chairs and went back to hand sanding. So when I did the stain the table, I just used ice, Cartsamelli washed away ice on the table, but because the chairs were a slightly different uh, colour of wood to the table, I used a mix of ice and cuttlefish and I think it was driftwood. Just like with everything else, I brushed it on and wiped it off. Once I had everything stained, I got some 600 grit sandpaper and smooth sanded everything. This part was actually really satisfying to do. It was a lot nicer than you know the actual sanding process. You can get the 600 grit sandpaper from Sleek Brushes Australia. So the next painful process was to remove all the old fabric and backing off the cushions. I uh, didn't have a staple remover so I started using a paint scraper. So I was just shoving the corner of it in underneath the staple as best I could and then kind of twisted it and wiggled it to pop it up a little bit. And then, not sure what you call these pliers, um, I'll find them on the Bunnings website and put the link in the description. But I like these pliers for pulling staples and nails because you can rock it backwards and forwards and it does minimal damage to anything.
now it's time to remove the actual fabric uh, as you can see I've got tape on my hand because by this point I'd given myself a lot of blisters I uh, didn't have any band-aids so I just made do so I found the easiest way to tackle this job was to get the pliers and basically rip the fabric back and then pull out whatever staples were sticking up didn't need to have, take all of the staples out just took out the, anything that was sticking out heaps it would have been easier just to leave the old fabric on and reupholster over the top of it but it would have made it too bulky when it came time to putting it back on the chair So the fabric I got is a charcoal fabric from Spotlight, I'm not sure of the exact name of it, sorry, I can put the link in the description for anyone who might be interested. I kept one of the old seat covers and basically traced around that to uh, mark out the new one, obviously. When you're marking it up, I didn't do it in this one, but mark your corners so that you know which way around it goes. So this process is pretty self-explanatory. Um, once you do one, it's really easy to get the hang of it. I'm using the Ozito electric staple gun. And starting on one side, put in three or four staples and then do the opposite side to pull it tighter. Not too tight, but you know, to tighten it across the center. You get what I mean, hopefully. Then go all along the edges. I'm not a professional at this, so this is just the way I do it. You want to pull it tight, but you don't want it to have anything, any marks in it where it's pulled too tight. When you're doing your corners, kind of roll them up and over a bit, if that makes any sense. I do have another video where I show you a bit more in depth how I do this. So I will put that in the description as well. So there was nothing wrong with the old backings off these chairs so I kept them and am just reattaching them. Alright so I got three meters of this fabric. Um, hoping that it would be enough to do eight chairs. It was well and truly enough. I got all eight chairs cut out of uh, the three meters and I had enough left over to cut two more pieces. And just like when, I didn't show up, but when I was cutting the pieces for each of the cushions, <clears throat> for each of the cushions, um, I marked in the corners where the corners are for the corners, the, the little cut in corners of the, of the seats. I'm going to be folding these up and putting them in, I don't know, a Ziploc bag and I'll put them in a little box and give them to the owner when she comes to collect everything so that if anything happens to any of these cushions, uh, the fabric tears or it gets badly damaged or anything like that, um, they can either find someone local to them to uh, recover that seat or bring it back to me and I'll do it for free. Ooh, ah. When it came to reassembling the chairs, it was basically just doing what I did before but in reverse. When you're putting these parts on, don't tighten them too much so that you've got a bit of room, wiggle room for when you're putting the square part in. So all your bolts will be different lengths. So you've got the four longer ones that will go in the back corners. Then you've got the medium sized ones that will go in the front legs. And then your two shortest ones will go in the very back. There is my husband, he's not going to be happy with me.
So here they are guys, all done and set up in my mum's house until I've got a staging area. A lot of hard work went into this but the end result is amazing. I am very happy with it and of course I am even happier with how happy the owners are with them. When they came and picked them up they were over the moon and so was I. As always if you enjoyed this video please remember to subscribe and share and please give me a thumbs up. As much as I would like to go and sleep for a few weeks I have a lot going on still including renovations and there's challenges coming up and heaps of projects on the burner so stay tuned.